Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. What is biblical baptism? What is biblical baptism? Why do we do baptism? Baptism is a picture of being spiritually dead and coming back alive. In other words, you were not saved, you were dead, and now you have an alive spirit that will be alive forevermore, it says. Therefore, you are alive. You have God's alive spirit. We do this as a picture of what Jesus did, how he died for our sins. He was put in the tomb, he was put in the ground, and then he rose again. This is the picture that Jesus taught. And so we'll look at what is baptism, who should get baptized, and how should you get baptized. You're in Romans chapter 6. Look at verse number 3. And by the way, on a side note, baptism does not save. That's right. All right. If you say, well, I've talked to people that say, all right, I say, are you going to heaven? They say, oh yeah, I was baptized. Well, wait a minute. What do you trust in? You're trusting in your baptism? That's dead works. All right. Baptism does not save you. If you say, well, I am saved, but I've never been baptized. Will I still go to heaven? Absolutely. Baptism is something that comes after faith we're going to see. Look at verse number 3. Know ye not? that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into His death. Right? So it's a picture of His death. Look at the next verse. Therefore we are, builded, we are buried with Him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So he says it's like as Christ was raised, raised up, you also should walk as a new man. You should walk as a new person. You should stop the old ways and move on to new ways. You should walk in the Spirit instead of the flesh. This is the point of baptism. It's to make this outward confession, but it's also a, it's like the first step of obedience for a Christian. When a Christian says, well, you know, I know it's what it says, but I don't feel like doing it. Well, I did it years ago, and, and then I got saved, and I don't feel like doing it again because then everybody's going to know. You know, listen, that's not the right attitude. God wants you to humble yourself, be obedient to the Scriptures. He commands us because this is something that in the likeness, in His picture, then we receive newness. Look at the next verse, verse number 5. It says, For if we have been planted together in the likeness of His death, we shall be also in the likeness of His resurrection. Listen, this is also a picture that one day, after this body dies, I will have a brand new body. I will be resurrected from the dead by the power of God, just as Jesus was. And when Jesus was resurrected, He has a body that will not corrupt. It will not perish. I mean, He's walking through walls and doing all sorts of cool stuff. Hey, I look forward to that day when this old body, I can let it go away and get something new. That's kind of an awesome promise. Now turn to Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. In Acts 2, when you see the, the church growing by the thousands, it says, Then they that gladly received His Word were baptized. So immediately they hear the preaching, they receive what's being preached, they said, Hey, I believe that. I want to be baptized also. I want to make this outward profession, teaching what I believe. So who should be baptized? Who should be baptized? The Bible teaches that all believers, all Christians, should be baptized. You're in Acts chapter 8. Look at verse number 36. And as they went on their way, they came unto certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Great question. This guy's reading the Bible. This guy's preaching to him. And all of a sudden he says, Okay, well, wait a minute. There's some water right there. What's keeping me from being baptized? Huge question. What is it? What, what, I'm ready. What's, what do I have to do? Look what the guy says. This is the qualifying question. Verse 37. And Philip said, If thou believest. Right? So verse 37 is pointing out here that only a born-again Christian should get baptized. This disqualifies babies. This disqualifies infant baptism that the Calvinists do. That, that I mean, how many different denominations? The Orthodox, the Catholics, there's so many of them that believe, well, we'll just sprinkle this baby and call it baptism. That is not baptism. Look what he says, verse 37. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. 
And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You must have faith. You must be saved to be baptized. Amen. If you, verse 37 is that qualifier. And some Bibles actually take that out because they were influenced by the Catholics. So that means no babies. Babies are not allowed to be baptized. But the question, so how do we get baptized? Look at the next verse. Verse 38. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water. Both Philip and the eunuch. And he baptized him. So they went down into the water. Now turn to Acts chapter 16. Go ahead a few pages. Acts chapter 16. They go down into the water. They come back up out of the water. It's the likeness of God dying, going into the grave, and coming back up to life. Sprinkling in no way resembles that. And there are many Protestant denominations, which by the way, we are not Protestant. The Protestants came out of the Catholic Church. Listen, the true Christian church was long before the Catholic Church. We've been around, hey, it talks about the church in the wilderness. It talks. There was a congregation of true believers from the beginning, and there will be to the end. And that is separate from organized religion. I was talking with a lady yesterday. She said, oh yeah, organized religion. Yeah, it's just like organized crime, some of it. You know, what can we do to fleece the sheep, right? <laughs> and so, I mean, where we should have order in God's house here, but a lot of the organized religion have bad doctrine because they're being led by the devil. They are led by Satan. And it blows people's mind that, that, it, that why would you even sprinkle? And there are even Protestants that would say, well, during the persecution of the Catholics, we couldn't openly baptize so therefore, you know, we would just sprinkle. Wait a minute, see, because of the Catholics, you're going to do it the Catholics' way. That doesn't make any sense. You're going to tell me you couldn't find a tub of water? You're going to tell me you couldn't find a river to go in? doesn't make any sense. In Mark 1 of Jesus, it said, and when He was being baptized, it says He's straightway coming up out of the water. Jesus came out of the water. He went down into the water. You go up into the water. A picture of His death and resurrection. And listen, since you have been saved, if you have not been baptized properly, if you haven't been dunked under the water, it didn't count. Yeah. Listen, if you got baptized years ago and then you found out that you weren't saved and you corrected it, you just got wet before. Yeah. You can't just take a shower, take a bath and say, oh, I got baptized. Oh, there's a proper way to do it. There's a proper picture of it. And you need to redo it if you're in question of that. Now you're in Acts chapter 16. Look at verse number 29. Here in Acts chapter 16, there, Paul is in prison. There's an earthquake. It sets everybody free. The, the, the jailer is about to like, kill himself. He's so worried because he knows that he would lose his job. They will probably behead him. And so, you, look, we pick that story up in verse 29. It says, Then he called for a light and sprang in and came in trembling and fell, fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Best question in the whole Bible. This guy's to the point of death. He knows that his, his life is on the line. And there's this miracle in the jail. And he's, instead of dying, oh, what do I have to do to be saved? What, how can I know for sure my soul is going to heaven? Look what he says, 31. And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Now it says, and thy house, not because if, if, I, if daddy has faith, the kids are automatically going to heaven. Look at the next verse. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. And he took him the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and baptized he and he and all his straightway. Now go to Matthew 28. So he's saying, this guy, he, he heard it. What do I have to do? Believe. He got saved. He, okay, now take me to my house. Let's go meet my family. Please preach to my family so they also can be saved. So it says that they spake unto him the word of the Lord. You don't get saved by just some thought or so you have to hear the Bible you have to hear the word of the Lord to be saved you can't take that out of the gospel you can't say that you know that, that salvation is just by well I had this moment I was sitting at home and I thought I saw the clouds open up and I saw a picture and I said yeah that's it that's salvation listen there are a lot of people with funny experiences that they uh, stories that they would say well I know that I'm saved because I got in this car wreck and I just know that God's not done with me yet well, maybe He's preserved you long enough so you can hear the Word of God, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, get saved, and then do what this guy did, and then get baptized immediately. They did it the same hour. right? They helped heal the, the Paul, and then they got baptized. Of course, they took him back to prison. But all believers are commanded after salvation to get baptized. If you got baptized before you believed, you need to redo it. 
if you have any doubts, if you say, well, I know I was saved, but I was in one of these funny churches where I don't even think the pastors... It, look, if you have any doubts, just redo it. But it's not about the man that baptizes you. It's about your willingness to do it, your humility of just admitting that what the Bible says is right and doing what the Bible says. That's where God rewards you. In Acts 10, it says, and He commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Acts chapter 10, I mean, these people, okay, I get it, I believe it, now what? And He commanded them to be baptized. You're in Matthew chapter 28. Go to the end of the chapter here. Find verse number 18. And Jesus came in and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. So here Jesus said, hey, I've got all the power in heaven and in earth. So he sends his disciples in power doing what? Teaching them. Once you get saved, baptize. Right. Get baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. That is God's biblical pattern. That is his commandment to show the resurrection.